Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a discussion with Dr. Adarsh Bhimraj, who is an infectious diseases specialist at the Cleveland Clinic Foundation in Cleveland, Ohio, in the United States. Uh, the purpose of this discussion is to look at various treatment options available for COVID-19. Uh, I'd like to point out again that our goal is to shed light on the information that is available to us here in the U.S. Uh, we are not making specific treatment recommendations for any given patient. That's up to their treating physicians wherever in the world they are. There are multiple treatment options. There are you know, corticosteroids, remdesivir, hydroxychloroquine. Should we start by broadly classifying these drugs into a couple of categories and then going one by one through each of them? Yeah. Madhu, I think it's good to have a broad, I don't know, 30,000 feet view of all the treatments uh, as a patient or as even as a doctor or provider. So if you take COVID-19, as most people know, it's an infection that starts off in the upper respiratory tract around the nose and then it can go into the lung. So if you look at treatments, there are two broad categories of treatment. The first category of treatments are treatments that try to kill the virus, right, or attack the virus. And such treatments are much more effective early on in the disease process or when the infection is mild. And what are the drugs that can uh, have these effects? These drugs are remdesivir. It's an antiviral drug that has received a lot of press. And uh, it's available in most parts of the world. They call it monoclonal antibodies, which act against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. That's the virus that causes the COVID-19 infection. Uh, and convalescent plasma, again, that is plasma that is taken from a patient who has recovered from COVID-19, that is also like the monoclonal antibodies. They kind of attack the virus, uh, trying to kill the virus and prevent the infection. And there are a lot of other oral agents as well, like favipravir. And again, our assumption is they act as antiviral. So these medications work well early in mild disease. But once the patient's infection progresses or becomes worse enough that they have to be admitted in the hospital, they need nasal oxygen, and then they need to be on a breathing machine like a ventilator, I think more than the infection, it is your body's own immune system uh, that is causing a lot of collateral damage because of excessive inflammation. And the drugs that are more useful at that point in time are things that kind of tame the inflammation. So the drug so far which has shown a lot of benefit is steroids, corticosteroids uh, in a later stage of the disease. There's certain other medications called as tocilizumab, uh, which have been shown to be efficacious. And there are other medications which are in the pipeline, um, there's some which are like baricitinib and a few other drugs also that are being studied to tame the inflammation. So roughly these are the two categories. Early on, drugs that act against the virus, later on drugs that tame the inflammation. So one size doesn't fit all. I think it becomes very important that depending on what phase of the disease or the illness, you have to tailor the treatment to that phase. 